After all, not all superheroes wear capes. Cut, that was great. Okay, everyone, take five while we reset. Mm hmm thank you. Whew. This thing is making me sweat like a flat earther sailing towards the horizon. We all love superheroes, right? Except Scorsese, he is not a fan. But the rest of us love superheroes. Now sure, it's exhausting to have to see a new movie every four days just to keep up, but not as exhausting as constantly hearing everyday people called superheroes as a substitute for real support, like caregivers, like me. My dad lives with me because he requires long-term care and I've turned down jobs so I can be there for him. But that doesn't make me a superhero. It makes me a normal person just trying to do right by my family. It makes me a typical caregiver. And caregivers are what I want to talk to you about today. Now, I know what you're wondering. Is caregivers based on existing IP? No, no, they're not. They're real human people. But I'm asking you to listen anyway. Oh, thank you. Oh, good God, that tastes like the devil's diaper. Pamplemousse. Hell kind of French nonsense is that? Okay, remember when I said not all superheroes wear capes? Here's the thing. Superheroes do wear capes. Thor has one, Storm, Batman, Superman. You know, I think Cher even had a cape face. But caregivers don't wear capes because they're not superheroes. It's more like an Us Weekly spread. Caregivers, they're just like us. Because caregivers are us. 53 million of us in the U.S. right now. That's almost as many caregivers as minutes in the Snyder Cut. And caregiving is so much more than the cliched Crocs-wearing nurse, sponge-bathing, a grouchy but well-meaning old man. Caregiving is driving your mom to the doctor. It's managing services with your disabled sibling. It's taking out your elderly neighbor's trash, even though it'll result in a 40-minute conversation about how no one uses pencils anymore. It's helping your parents manage their affairs. And I don't mean the ones they're organizing on Silver Single. It's being there for your partner while they recover from an accident. It's doing all that stuff while also balancing a full-time job and season two of Bridgerton a balancing act that disproportionately affects the people already impacted by social inequities. It's, Lord, <laughs> providing whatever care he's gonna need. You good? Oh, good. Yeah, Ricky's good. Caregiving is varied, it's broad, it's universal. What we wanna see is real examples of what real families deal with every day. The highs and the lows and all the ways care shows up in our daily lives. You have the power to do that and with great power comes great responsibility. Put a caregiver character in your movie. Include a caregiving plot line in your show. And for the love of Kevin Feige, tell the audience they're caregivers. Let me just go check on Ricky, I'll be right back. Ricky! I am simply asking you to make us visible. If we can see a man who's also a bat, represented on screen 168 times in the past decade alone, we can show one black woman taking care of her charming, adorable dad, thank you. Okay, let's recap. One, caregivers aren't superheroes. They're real people who need our support, not our pedestals. Two, caregiving is both inclusive and universal. Three, there's too many Batmans. Just, we get it, okay? And four, representation matters. Please, just tell our stories accurately and authentically. We're not asking to be superheroes, because actually, superheroes usually do wear capes. <laughs>